Hey there, and welcome back to the Train of Thought, an educational monster train series where we fight the divinity in every run. So I wanted to talk today about what I'm calling creature comforts. I've recently started really getting into just being cozier in general. This is not something I normally do. I don't find myself, you know, bundling up in blankets or things like that or getting surrounding myself in gigantic pillows or, you know, things like that. But over the course of the past couple months, I've, you know, invested in some nice slippers. Wow. All right. Look at me go. And then I also have just like a cozy hoodie that I wear around now. And I've started to get to the point where I'm like, you know what? I get it. Right. I super get it these kinds of cozy things, it's nice to be comfortable, right? It's good to be comfortable. Why Why not be comfortable is the thing, right? It's This is actually something that I think is a good evolution that everyone who does is doing like, okay, right? You're not, if you're struggling with finances, I get it, right? You're going to, you're going to sacrifice comforts in order to get by hundred percent. But once you reach like a certain kind of mid range point where you're, you're doing okay, you have to reach a you get to the point where you're going to need to think about, you know, improving your quality of life, right? It's worth it to enjoy the time you have. So get a cozy blanket, get a nice pillow, you know, get a nice hoodie or something or some, you know, wrap or whatever works well for you. Have get some slippers. Sure, do it, right? You only live so long. Why not be comfortable while you're able to be alive, right? That's my perspective. And this is kind of this has been a theme for me because I, I, I don't know how much I've talked about this, but I grew up it below the poverty line. And so that made it it made it very difficult for me as an adult that got into engineering and was able to actually afford things to get over that belief that I should always be very frugal, right? I always had this philosophy that's like, okay, well, I didn't, I don't need to spend any money on this. So don't and bare minimum, everything, everything bare minimum, just enough to get by nothing else. You know, it was like, don't have a nice place to live. Don't have nice things. You know, you don't need these things. It's okay. Just, just get by. And it was great. I mean, it's very helpful for building up a savings because you don't, you're not doing anything. You're not spending anything. You're just kind of existing. And then I, I realized I was like, all right, well, I think I'm, I'm doing really well financially. Like I'm not not by any means rich or anything, but I'm doing fine. I'm doing well. And so I was like, OK, well, you're allowed to have something nice. And this this has been a very big challenge for me is your this whole you're allowed to have a nice thing moment. And part of that is this realization here. This is literally part of that where it's like, OK, Slippers are okay. You're allowed you're allowed to enjoy that and be a little more comfortable. And yeah, that's just kind of a nice realization, I think. Uh, it's it's an important it's an important step, right? And I think that a lot of people could benefit from this. You're allowed to enjoy your life in addition to just surviving. And having been there myself where you really do have to just penny pinch everything, I get it. I really do. And some people are still going to be there, right? It's they're, they're not going to be out of that, right? I'm not going to tell someone that they need to spend money on something frivolous when they're struggling to get groceries or something or when they're like literally starving. So yeah, I get it. But but we're all in different circumstances. And if you have the ability to afford small comforts, I think they're I think they're good improvements to take. So let that be thou life, life lesson learned from rising dusk on monster train. Here we go. Hopefully, hopefully that resonates with some folks. I don't know. We'll see. Let's play some monster train. I'm done trying to wax philosophical on you all. What are we doing? Our previous run, which brought us up to 240 wins on the series, pretty good number, was with not this guy. Wait, nope, it was not that guy. This guy, Rector. 
we had a pretty middling burnout rector run with nearly all units walking into diligent uh, there was a horned warrior with multi-strike multi-strike rather the horned warrior was an infusion into a multi-multi rail beater so he hit a ton of times it was a rage imp stealth tomb line we ended up with no endless until the very end but we had some absolute pop-off with welder helper infused into transcend imp insanity and that run that run went hard at the end it was actually not very strong and then became ridiculous so pretty cool always love it when that happens when it finally comes together and that, that kind of leans into one of the strategies i talk about a fair bit which is just don't lose long enough to win right if you always if you just always not die you win at the end, right? And as long as you can skate by, sometimes you maybe see something at the next ring that completely changes your run in a big way. So I, I super support the skate by strategy in a lot of runs that are otherwise pretty weak. And then you ramp up at the end and hopefully crush from there. So we're now moving on to Spine Chief. Yeah, this seems fun. I'm all in for Spine Chief. This seems like a good time. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. I don't think there's a particular run I'm anxious to see. I think I would go for, you know, I say this every week. I'm always looking for some kind of like, you know, fun high roll or something. It's good, right? It's enjoyable, especially because this is, I think, the first episode I'm recording today. So at this point, I'm thinking I would love to start off on a high note. Now, if they want to give me the challenging run, fine, 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 but we'll see. All right, that's everything I've got for you. So as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And Monster Train, let's go play it. Play the video game. Let's do. Yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I don't really have any particular reason for it other than that I am. So it's good. It's great. Woo. Wonderful. Feels good to be in a good mood. I don't... Pro I couldn't... I couldn't attribute it to any one thing, really, but I'm definitely hoping that the monster train treats me as well as I feel right now. I might get, now hear me out, I might get a fancy breakfast delivery order today. Wow, look at me, really big spender over here. I have slippers and I might order delivery. Incredible. Anyway, let's play, <laughs> let's play some monster train. Cracking myself up over here, it's ridiculous. Today we are Default Wormkin, Default Stygian, which is honestly great. I have no complaints here. Anytime you get Spine Chief plus some spell that you can play on spell on Spine Chief's floor without a target, you're doing great, right? Even torches are fine, pings, whatever I can shoot myself, it's no big deal. But the ones you want to watch out for are Queen Zimplings, you know, Dregs are not as bad, but still kind of a bit rough. There are some other ones that I think can be a little tough, right? But those are the ones to watch out for. Currently, we are facing, this is what, Days Tallow, Spell Shield Fell, Patient Seraph with Echo Snare, Mollusk Mage, Return Soul. All of these are fine. Return Soul's excellent. Convert things into second plays. It's not as good as if it were purple, but you know, it's fine. And then Echo Snare is fine as well. It can capitalize on some things. It's more Reap, sure. Mollusk Mage is okay. I'm happy to stick him behind Spine Chief in the early game. Make those Frozen Lances hit harder. He'll probably get removed or something, but we'll see. Temples today are 2, 3, 5, and that's it. Oh, that's it. All early, I guess, mostly. There's one at least in the mid game somewhere, but still pretty rough. Okay. Dupe on 8 is Steel Side, nothing crazy, otherwise pretty spread out. Removal Dupe Horde on 7 is very strong, if we can use it, competes with a Magic Shop. Vortex, Cave, and Trinket Shop, with money in the middle, is pretty solid. It's a really strong Ring 6 no Gen. Competes with a Steel Shop that's pretty okay as well, it's got a Horde and some money. Seems good. Very strong setup, noting the lack of Magic Shop here, the lack of Steel on 7. We'll see what that means, if anything, but... Generally, Wormkin Relics rock, so I'm happy to go on a Trinket Shop here, especially with there's money in the middle. I love that. Five has Steel and Magic. Steel has the Vortex. Magic has the Cave. Four has Steel and Magic. So, I mean, we haven't, get, we haven't gotten got here, right? There's good spreads of Steel and Magic, which means there's probably nothing fancy on Ring 3. Four has a Stygian Banner with a Vortex and Steel Shop that's very strong if we can use it. 
Let's see, early game. Let's see, banner situation. We have both banners on ring two. Steel Shop has Stygian, Wormkin is on the magic. There is an additional Wormkin banner on three with a horde. Yeah, no shops on three, kind of expected it. Random Hellvent, sure, why not? It's fine, right, it's fine. Titan's Claws, Split Anvil. We're gonna take the Split Anvil because it's at least better. Titan's Claws is generally not something we would wanna consider here. Split Anvil, maybe we can play around it. Grab money, whatever. Infector, Decayer. The, the Wormkin banners are present, but not particularly well aligned. I think Decayer is much stronger here. We'll click it. I also like the Decayer because we have a lot of sources of Reap. So something like Decay Decoy pops off pretty hard here. Unit draft, 100%, take it. I want to see units, absolutely. This trial doesn't threaten me in any appreciable fashion. We're just going to load up downstairs, I think. Nothing too terribly fancy. Reap out, reap out, it's good. I'm going to go ahead and play a train steward middle. I don't want to, I want to try to save, what are the Mollus mages here if we can. Yeah, Mollus mage can come chill down here and that's fine. I am going to reap for money. I think it's worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and Frozen Lance downstairs. It's a power play. I'm gonna return soul of Frozen Lance and go again, which should clear that whole floor. Sure does. Good. Okay. Play the other Mollusk Mage. It's good. Upstairs. Man, we come close to killing him, but he takes he takes two damage off us, and I'm okay with that. It's a it's something I definitely earned because I got, I greeted for money, but that's worth it. Two, two health for 75 or whatever it was is worth it. We went on bottom floor, no problems. The reap is enough. Didn't even get to really capitalize on Mollusk Mage. Part of the advantage of the Mollusk Mage angle though is you do 10 damage in the back, which is good. So a strong opener. Echo Snare is purple. That's pretty solid. It's a lot of reap. Shelter, eh, Bogfly. I'll take the purple Echo Snare. I don't mind adding more of these, it's okay. For the moment anyway flash freeze titan's gratitude is not bad actually i'm actually okay with titan's gratitude because i have no other discards and it's a pretty decent purple frontline smash i don't think i need flash freeze when i have decayer so well gratitude it's okay lodestone totem yeah all right sure that seems winning cool okay i love shark here i also love first of kin here but lodestone totem is great happy to have him amazing now, based on that, we're just going to go to the right here and see what we hit. There's a lot of options. Multi-strike. Give me a Siren of the Sea or something. Yeah, okay. So here's the angle. We go Siren of the Sea. We put the multi-strike in it. Right? Chillin'. We're going to go ahead and probably use Lodestone Totem's Infusion here, but we don't have to do this right away. There's truly no reason to rush. Steel Shop on two? No. I'm going to go ahead and take the plus 25. I'm fine with it. I would be looking for Incant Armor 2 here, ideally, but this is acceptable. I'd rather fill it out early than wait. We're going to use the Totem's Infusion here, so I'm not upset about this. I'm not going to go in on it yet. I don't see a reason to go hard here. It does mess up potentially our early game a little, but I'm just not going to play the Lodestone Totem. It doesn't matter. The Siren already wins these combats at 10 shards, so we chill. Sure, we can also, we can plan around this at ring three as well. We can go left, do the infusion, immediate dupe him. Yeah, we're chilling, moving on. This is a train of thought, we don't have to go that hard. I can casually take the spikes here, no problem. Take money, I like that. Fine. It's a pretty good turn one, actually. I think we do just go size chief downstairs with the siren and we send it on both of these and just kill the whole floor seems good i would like echo snare downstairs for sure i'm gonna play one frozen lance up top i think it's good although actually i can just mollusk mage this right sure get them bud and then we get the double downstairs if we want them sure i take plus one but it's not a big deal I'm not mad about it the siren wins this combat no matter what we incant it's fine Burn it all out. All good. Reap here. We're going to go ahead and return soul on... I don't know. It doesn't matter. Hit this man. It's all good. I guess we play another Mollusk Mage. Sure, why not? 
And then you send it downstairs. He's dead anyway, it's fine. Even face tanking all this damage, we still win before the reap ticks in, so super easy. Echo Transfer is a very good payout here. I like Shelter. It's a purple Shelter. It's very good, but it's hard to say no to an Echo Transfer like this, right? A payout for the multi-strike is pretty sick. Although if I go in on Lodestone Totem, this straight up does not matter. The Shelter is probably better. I'll take the Shelter. We have Lodestone Totem. It's good. Offering token. I, it's not purple. I mean, I guess it could be Ice Tornado, right? I, it's frozen, but it also plays nice with Split Anvil. All right, it's Ice Tornado. It's also purple. I'm good with that. That lets me play more cards. I think we go left here. Yeah, I think so. We go left, we infuse, we dupe. Yeah, all right, it's in. Cool. I am going to infuse first because I could get an X5. And if they give me an X5, I'll take the free X1 here. And that would be enough. There's no universe I X5 this like that. But yeah, we go with Lodestone Totem Infusion. Awesome. Very defensible. I could plus 30 the Ice Tornado here. Or the I guess the Titan's Gratitude. I wouldn't X5 it anyway. I wouldn't do it for the Ice Tornado either. I just don't think those are worth it. Look at the cave first. In case we get the Overstack and then we can dupe. Yeah, alright. Tiny Stone. Sure. He's small. This means I don't even need space on this floor, which is ridiculous. What? Okay. I was, my plan for anyone keeping track was I was going to do decay or bottom floor and then two of these goodens upstairs. And that was going to be my whole run. But now I can actually jam them all together. So sure. Great. Amazing. This is exactly why we do this in this order. You see it like that. Cool. And then we make another one of these, and it's nuts, right? It's absolutely ridiculous, completely cracked. It's fine. We're so far ahead right now. Plus 30 Titan's Gratitude is good. We're going to click that. Sure. I think that's worth it. I don't think the intrinsic adds anything, but a plus 30 on an attuned is pretty solid. We'll take that. And we move on. I think at 65 shards, we have no fear here. We should easily win the multi-strike in. I have two copies of things. Obviously, I can't, like... 17 damage, huh? Is there a world I play bottom floor here? You could also consider mid floor and just play one of them. The thing is, is I'm going to need to take the Ember Tax here because I can never play my second Siren if I play top floor. So, that's something to keep in mind. The problem is bottom floor, this rage does cause me some issues. I'm going to play top, and we accept. I only need the one siren here to really make us feel strong. So that should be okay. Yeah, we never get to play the other one, but that's okay. I think we take the frozen lances. I'll return soul and burn one. It's fine. She rides up, which is unfortunate, but it should be okay. We just kind of play it out, and I mean, this this pops off, right, in a big way. Yeah, the enemies don't even attack. It's fine. As long as I draw spells, we're okay. There is the world where you don't draw spells, and this looks pretty rough. But, like, here, we're chilling, right? I can actually reduce the foot soldier to zero. I do think we want to pop this conduit infiltrator downstairs on his damage shield, so pop this guy. I take two damage, which is ridiculous. Clear everything. And then we hopefully draw spells. It's really just draw spells is the only risk here, right? Ice Tornado into that split anvil is a big play that I'm very happy for. And yeah, we reduce everything to nothing. Uh, but we should reap downstairs instead. Chillin'. I'll take one and it's fine. Cool, and this should be simple. There's an argument for putting down the second Siren here. I think it's a pretty good argument, if I'm being honest. Sure, we'll drop in the second Siren. We play everything else out. We already killed the floor. It's good. Cool. We go Frozen Lance here. I'm going to return Soul a Frozen Lance to play it out. We'll go ahead and Fracture the boss. Drawing both Mollusk Mages here is pretty decent. There's a chance we get got, but I think we win off Raw Stats anyway. Nah, we chill. 
Yeah, we went on for all stats, even if I was thinking the worst case, double deadweights, double train steward draws. We're chilling. You just go ice tornado here and it pops off, and this floor I take only damage to what, like spikes or something? This is ridiculous, in fact. I guess maybe they hit me for one. Yeah, okay. I <laughs> get hit for four damage, sure. Seems good. Strong. Gifts for a guard is interesting. It's an interesting choice. Burn cards. I don't have anything I really want to keep here, so I wouldn't mind it. The unironic gifts for a guard. The cool thing is this is a very big power play in terms of sapping enemies down. I really like this. And with no reliance on a hold over here, it's fine to just burn stuff. Yeah, let's take it. Don't need these units. First of Kin, Icy Cellophite, Kinhost Vessel, we move on. I'm gonna take the Ember Tax here. I need to be able to play Second Siren, and it's not even, it has to happen. Ember Tax, cool. I don't need Merchant of Steel or Stygian Banner here, so I can go Magic Shop. Magic Shop is cool, because I can take 20 Consumes and some other stuff. Sure, we'll do that. I like the removals, but the steel shop is dead to me, so we go to the right. It's fine. I'll take the horde. All it takes is... Oh my god, sketches? There's two more dupes in my path. Wow, okay, wait. Sketches is hard to play here, isn't it? Think about this. I have to... I have 385. I haven't bought any removals yet. That's what, 60, 90, 150 clears two. 60, 90, 120. So that's what, 210, 270. I can spend 270 here and cut three units, which is basically three train stewards. And that gives me a four and five unit setup. crazy and then i can is that is this actually stronger than just chief and make and play top it's weird because it's strong but i already took the ember tax i could just take worn grindstone and start a few incants ahead maybe or cleansing water is probably pretty solid i think we're okay i think we win either way and the sketches actually adds risk to this run in my opinion i'm gonna take cleansing water you could argue very strongly and successfully to me that i should take sketches there but i think it just adds risk that i don't care to worry about right there's no reason for me to want to do that yeah <laughs> I would like a permafrost for gifts for a guard, I think. Maybe? Remove consume is a little less valuable. I think I'm just going to make gifts for a guard cost two. This is a weird one because, again, remember, gifts for a guard pops out, which makes everything else in my hand cheaper. But I'd like to stagger the cost. So if I get, like, Ice Tornado plus gifts on a turn, I can kind of stagger it a little bit. And that seems good to me. So we'll put the minus one there. This plus 10, I just don't know if I care about. It's low impact. Skip it. Reroll this. Double stack. Now that's worth considering on something like shelter, potentially. It's actually probably worth it. We'll grab that. Yeah, we'll leave that as is. The minus one here. I am going to make fracture free, I think. I also think it is worth it to cut units. Train steward should go. I'd like money. Steel Shop. Again, Steel Shop Vortex, not great. I'll probably go to that Magic Shop. I think I'm just going to go in on two removals here to improve my card draws. We're at 80 shards walking into ring four. So let's go. This is interesting. I skipped sketches. I think I didn't need to. I could have taken it and gone hard there, but I wouldn't have gotten any value out of the Magic Shop then. It's kind of a weird situation. This guy... Light Harnesser lost his regen. Get God Buddy, I guess. That's okay. Top floor is no problem. You just single in cans and crush this floor, no problem. We do pay the tax afterwards, but I'm not upset about it. We lose the collector, unfortunately, but that's alright. 
I could have potentially gotten it if I'd played mid floor, but there's really no way of knowing, yeah? We return soul back, a frozen lands, just burn it, it's fine. We actually clear the floor and we're chilling. This should be really strong, actually, if I'm being honest with you. Just play Ice Tornado here, go hard, incant, it's your friend. Yeah, this floor does nothing to, nothing to me whatsoever, and then we incant. The fact that we do damage on the same floor that we send it on otherwise is pretty nuts. Play out Mollusk Mage, you hit the gifts here. Yeah, see, it goes hard, right? Huge incant turn coming right out here. And then we're gonna, I guess, Titan's Gratitude. If we hit the dead weight, cool. All right, it's fine. I can always play that other one later, it doesn't matter. Yeah, here's a great example. We go Ice Tornado in, cool, which makes gifts free. Then we just send it, we gifts out. Yeah, I mean, gifts for a guard is nuts here, right? And then you return soul back literally anything. You could go really hard here if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna drop 48 armor from shelter and chill. Truly nutty, I think. We incant, we just fracture a couple times. This next turn is not going to be very good, but it does not need to be. Cool. We've done enough incanting. It's fine. We win without even needing to go to reap, which is strong. That's where you want to be, right? Forgotten trade. Power of knowledge is pretty sick, actually. With all of these consumes coming out of gifts for a guard, it's also purple. We'll click it. I'm happy to take ammo. Ice Storm, another good vector for plus 30s, 10 in piercings. It's purple. We'll click it. It's fine. I'm okay taking cards because we draw fast. 230. If I go left, what could they show me? Removals are pretty high value though, right? With money. Money so I can go to this trinket shop and go hard. The magic shops are what? Like the minus ones are nice, I suppose but I kind of want to get in on some removals here. Yeah, let's go right. I'm fine with it. The steel shop does nothing for me, but I get to cut my remaining train stewards and we chill with that. That's a very high power swing, in my opinion. Divine Temple. A minus two is maybe okay. Tendon Piercing. Interesting. Tendon Piercing, Power of Knowledge. You can really do some damage there. Although Tendon Piercing, Titan's Gratitude. My dupes are... I mean, that's a pretty good dupe, right? You could also minus you tendon piercing and then minus to the power of knowledge. That's a pretty strong ping, if I'm being real with you. This is going to do some serious damage. I could then dupe it later for funsies, which is neat, I suppose. Minus two, just straight up making gifts for a guard free is also okay. I can still leverage the split anvil in other ways. Or I could go shelter here. Shelter might be the best play here. High defense. Pretty good setup. The thing is, is whatever I want to upgrade here is going to be my target for my dupes later, right? Hellvents. I have good Hellvent lineups. So I want to I want to power something up. I could maybe flex this a little. Tenon piercing is good into like the Titan's Gratitude. 225 in piercing is pretty decent. And if that hits with the Gifts for a Guard, this becomes a true bomb which is awesome. Just frag something completely and it pierces, which is cool. Or I can do the 10 in piercing minus two on power of knowledge. That makes a really good ping, which is cool. I don't think it's ever ice tornado. 10 in piercing is good in ice storm. And I would do this if I had a plus 30 here. If I could make this thing a 41 in piercing, I'd be in, but I can't. I think this is our last big upgrade. It's the last temple, right? So with our last temple, I would like our dupes to be big damage spell of some kind. I do like the Tenon Piercing Power of Knowledge. It's really good at stopping enemies from hitting. All right, I think we're going to go in on this. Tenon Piercing Power of Knowledge. We'll minus two the Power of Knowledge. This is now Big Gun, I think. No further infusions required. I think we save our money, mostly. And then go to this trinket shop and try to hit. 
and we're fine. Already over 100, but that's not a big deal. Yeah, all right, whatever. Sick Offensive Seraph stands no chance. Harpy is going to implode. Harpy versus Sap. Good luck, buddy, right? Good luck, friendo. We play top floor. Take the single incant. It's fine. I couldn't play the other one. It's okay. Second Siren drops in. We get to hold the Ice Tornado, which is cool. A good turn. Blow the floor up, basically. I will just play the Ice Storm here. I'm probably going to double reap middle because I seem strong to do it. Return soul something here. It's going to burn a frozen lance, right? Yeah, I'll burn a frozen lance here, I think, just so I can get some incants. I'm going to kill the guy downstairs, I think, just so I know how that guy's he's dead because he doesn't attack and he might not otherwise die. Cool, we Fracture, I think we go ahead and Frozen Lance, we Frozen Lance, I will click the Shelter here for 32 armor, it's good, we clear the floor, we should hopefully keep doing that, I think, get rid of, get rid of Mollusk Mage here and chill, top floor just blast something, that's pretty cool, it's already doing zero, so I mean, I may as well incant though, right? Ah, why not, you might as well take the incant, yeah? It's fine. Goodbye, Harpy. I knew you well. I will take this Ice Tornado turn. This is a pretty strong play. Makes everything here free. Amazing. Then you click Gifts here. Sure. It pops off. Really good incant turn. I could do... Yeah, I mean, I'm going to click the 145 Blast downstairs, though. That's pretty neat. Blow that guy up in the front, I think, and chill. I could bring something back and send it, which is kind of nice. My next turn is not amazing. So what I would like to do is I'd like to return soul the ice tornado and sit on the ice tornado. Yeah, because this should make all of those spells free yeah yeah yeah. watch this this is gonna be good here and then we just reap this guy down to ether nothing and he stands no chance eight sap is plenty to beat harpy here it's enough free turns it's not even factoring the 144 reap damage we do as well so that's pretty cool rationing scales is probably okay actually although if we get steel slate from the divinity we should watch out for that right he could do a ton of damage to us. I actually think just Steel Slate is enough of a risk that I don't want to take the Rationing Scales. I'll sell it. Fine. That's okay. Ancient Resonance is probably a pretty good card here, huh? More ammo is your friend, I think. Revenge is not bad, but I think I don't need it. I'll take the Ancient Resonance. Sure, it's good. Preserve is excellent here. For a lot of reasons, I can preserve my one discard, but I can also preserve the, what's it called, the gifts for a guard in order to have a very big turn later. I like that a lot. Cool, I like that. We're going to go right. I want to look at this trinket shop. There's a lot of good hits here, potentially. Karuska, Decay Decoy is disgusting. We click Decay Decoy. Absolutely, 100%. Take the money in the middle. And then let's vaguely think about the rest of this. Karuska is not as good as one would hope. I have no good targets here. I've skipped a couple, right? Just like the melee weakness one, but what am I going to do with it? It's fine. Sigiled Seaweed is kind of nuts, though, right? That's a super option. I'll take the Spike of the Stygian. This is good because it's more sap, which plays nice with Lodestone Totem. It's flexible Ember, which plays nice with Split Anvil. And... Yeah, you could argue the rail spike for Awoken's rail spike is good, and it is. I love this here, too. Also, s similarly good for a lot of reasons, but I like the burst of sap that comes from the bike of the Stygian here. So we're going to grab that. Cool, why not? We get removals. I'm going to take this opportunity to drop my last two units. Mollusk Mages, goodbye. They're not embers I like to spend. 28 cards is acceptable. And I think we just grab Sigiled Seaweed here and cruise. It's a great relic I'm always happy to have and move on. 
Don't even need to bother with the reroll there and maybe see something better. I mean, obviously you could high roll in the founding seal or something, but you can also just see garbage. And I don't think I need founding seal to win this run. So there's no reason to take the risk, basically. That's 100% the angle I have. We play top floor, no, no big change otherwise. Take the incant. I, they're all silenced, that's kind of cool. I guess I'll just keep the incant going upstairs, it's fine. Sure, seems decent. Okay, we get second siren. You've heard about first siren, but what about second siren? Take some stacks here, it's fine. Clear out that front guy, get some sap in, I'm okay with it. Our whole purpose now is just to sap these guys to zero, which we do successfully do. No problem, burn a frozen lance, why not? Every incant is worth it. We're also applying disgusting amounts of reap here, so that's cool. Play every card, there's no reason not to. The reap is worth it. Yep, he's dead, extremely dead. I think you have to go upstairs now, Fell. Give me a good turn. Amazing. Yeah, so you just go Spike of the Stygian down for four into the boss. Incredible. We play every single one of these cards, which is amazing. Then we go Gifts for a guard here, and we send it. This is a great turn for a random permafrost that gets blasted, and then we Titan's Gratitude here. This is just like 600 damage and Reap coming out right now, right? Just tons of damage applied to the boss there. So, no real concerns. We're gonna blow up mid-floor, just no doubt in my mind. Play another Frozen Lance, whatever. Oh no, he doesn't die. It doesn't matter, because he just blows up. Good. Ah, and the boss decided to come upstairs again. Seems good to me. Let's play Gifts for a Guard here. Cool. We're really sending it. There's really not much else to add on this. We're doing a lot of damage. And I may as well shoot the boss for a whopping 195 and then play everything else out. We nearly pre-relentless fell here as a result of this, which is... Truly impressive, if you're asking me. I probably could kill her here. Like, truly. Just hit, him, hit her with that reap downstairs. Yeah, we get the bottom floor kill, actually. Easy. I didn't even do the math. I was just like, I think we get it. So, simple. Monster train, amazing. I don't want second gifts, actually. No, I'm going to take Wormkin Spike here. That seems fun. And then I would like to draw more cards, please. Yes, thank you. More cards, better. Removal dupe is pretty tempting. Removals, I mean, what do you cut? Hard to say. You could dupe the gifts for a guard. Having a second one is not good because they can, they can burn each other, right? But you don't hate it if they burn each other. The thing that you have to watch out for, though, is just that I didn't want a non-purple one. What would the magic shop even show me? Like 20 consumes are fine here, I suppose. I'm going to go to the right. I'm certain there's a hell vent that's strong. We're going to go for that. Cuddle beard, icicle fracture, random frozens. This had the icicle fracture Titan's gratitude. I'll take the icicle fracture here over cuddle beard. I don't care about cuddle beard here. Take the money. Sure, I'll use it. We go to care three, of course. More health, more reap. The removals are not terribly high impact. I think I am just going to dupe the power of knowledge, though. It's a good card, right? Just bombs all around. Although second gifts is pretty solid here, too, if I'm being honest. Go pretty hard through the deck. All right, I'm going to make a second gifts here, I think, actually. Two cost gifts is better than three and one cost gifts, thanks to the split anvil. And I actually think a second purple gifts is really good for accelerating us. So, all right, sure. I'm going to cut frozen lances, maybe? They're not exciting. I don't hate them. 
Sure, frozen lances are fine. I think we'll drop these. I don't really care all that much. There's a lot of value in keeping random flack for my gifts to fire through, but at the same time, we don't need to hold on to a million things. I don't want dead turns. Spikes, I don't care. Give me money. It's hard to say. Yeah, this is the this is the bad setup, right? We actually have drawn so much that I can't guarantee that Icicle Fracture hits the Siren here. So we'll try, right? We'll try. And then I will play one Frozen Lance and hopefully 50-50 it. And we win. We lose, but that's okay. Right? It will have to do. I can blow up bottom floor here. I think I would like to incant. Kind of. This is potentially a very strong turn. I'm going to save the frozen gifts for a guard here, I think. We can we can go pretty hard on this. I'm actually going to hit the hit one gifts here, I think is good. I'm going to bomb middle. Fine. We consume up there's I think we actually ancient resonance mid floor here, get rid of that and then we'll we'll go in upstairs. Is it hold on to this for now. I'm trying not to spend too much stuff. Okay, I do want to incant. But I would also like to clear this floor. What's coming up? It's a pretty good turn, actually. All right, I'll play the Ice Tornado here. It's fine. I'm going to just burn some cards. Let's clear middle, actually. I want to get rid of that Shade Wings. Clear those Shade Wings downstairs. All right, fine. And then I guess we'll play a 24 shelter here and we're gonna freeze the wormkin spike all right i'm basically building out a strong upcoming turn which is pretty neat we have enemies on our floor i can straight up kill the steel wings with power of knowledge and i will i go for frozen lance on this one return soul a frozen lance here i think send it on that hit the preserve on a dead weight. The guy walks on me and then dies. That's okay. All right, we see second siren here. We see second siren here. I could guarantee siren becomes frozen here by sending it on a spike and then playing every other card. Or, I think we play the Siren here because it's good to do it, and then we play Wormkins, or then we play the Frozen Lance here, and the Wormkins Spike, and I think we actually will sap him to zero with the Spike of the Stygian. He will hit me unfortunately but i think it's better to do it this way so that i have all of them for these upcoming weight floors yeah this is yeah i think this is an improvement debatable but i'm happy with how this played out so i think we're gonna chill on that decision here i could play this but i could also just save it for good I don't have to play those on that turn. Sure. All right, now this is a turn where I would like to ice tornado into gifts for a guard for sure. Our goal is basically to blow this floor up. Yeah, so we hit the other gifts for a guard here, which is always fun. We get to kill a man outright, which is cool. We're looking to basically just play cards, right? Just send it and then you gifts again Cool. A strong turn, in fact. I'm going to hold some of these permafrosters here, I think. That's okay with me. And then save that for this next wave, which I really like. I guess we may as well reap downstairs. No real reason not to. Hit him with... He got, he got silenced. Silly. He got silenced. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to save the gifts for a guard here with the Icicle Fracture. And this turn is now currently insane, right? 
This is an in actually insane amount of scaling that we have locked away here. Cool. Yeah, we're we're chilling. I guess I could actually just play the gifts and just make everything free. Every single card is about to be burned here, right? If it's in our hand or our deck, it's going to be burned. And then I send the gifts, which then burns the return soul. And then every single card is gone from our deck. Yeah, we, we just have a single Titan's Gratitude here. Cool. So... I'm happy to draft additional stuff. Wormkin Spike? Yeah, sure, send it, buddy. Seems good. It's not purple. Do I care? Force Contamination? I can make it purple. I don't love that. Force Contamination? I don't really feel like that adds anything here either. We'll take the Spike. You may as well have it. It's fine. Unnamed Tome? Guardian's Amulet? Sure, I'll click Guardian's Amulet. It's purple. Why not? Fun. I can take random garbage. We go to the dupe because I think that is the most impactful thing we could get here for sure. Yes, we go to the dupe. I took a little bit of damage there. I still think it was right to take that damage. Being honest with you. I, to get that siren down, I think that helped those upcoming waves. I'm not going to run the math on it or anything. but Now, Hell's Banners is really strong because it actually hedges against the possibility of whiffing like that again. If I draw all three of them, I can just play them all. And that's worth a lot more to me than Temper Talisman or Pyrewall. So we take the Hell's Banners and feel great about that. Notice Stone is uniquely funny in how strong it is here, right? Improved Firebox also handles the draw problem, but I don't need multiple answers, so it's not a big deal. Merchant of Steel Endless? Nah, whatever. It doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. There's my Incan Armor too. The dupe here is, I think, as simple as Power of Knowledge again. Yeah, that seems accurate, right? Sure, another big bomb. I'm good with this. We'll take it. Could also have been the shelter, but it doesn't really matter. Notice Stone is fine. We'll just take it. Reroll this. Echo Seedling is huge. We take that. Vapor Funnel, fully unnecessary. Hammer chest plates. I really don't need to remove stuff. I guess I can take the hammer chest plates here and chill. Sure. I can't take upgrades. We're okay. I think we're good. 105 gold remaining, whatever. 155 out of 100. This is a train of thought, so I have no issue with it. I don't think Patient has a chance here, right? He really doesn't stand a chance against this, especially with the Echo Seedling hit. That's going to enable me to really burst him which I really appreciate. We go Chief, Siren, it's good. I'm going to fracture him, shoot one of these guys, and I'm going to freeze the Echo Snare so I have a guaranteed Echo Seedling play. Yeah, this is going to be pretty good, if I'm being honest with you. We then go in on Echo Snare here because it pulls ahead. And I want it to be the purple one because I drafted it. We just drop them. I'm going to go ahead and hit him with the Spike of the Stygian because it does it does apply, apply sap there. We freeze up Guardian's Amulet, which I'm going to hold on to until he's back on this floor, I think. Wormkin Spike. Yeah, I mean, we just send it, right? There's really no reason not to. And then we play the Ancient Resonance. Like, oh no, I didn't get rid of all my melee weakness, but I kind of don't care. Great. This is good because I have a Wormkin Spike that I can play at four, which makes everything free now. He is going to be reduced to nothing very quickly. We're going to click the gifts here. Cool. We'll play out pretty much everything. I'm going to drop the shelter for 44 and then hit him for an additional 300. He's looking rough. He is going to probably simply pass away now, I think. I believe that's going to be true. Yeah, sure. Just send it. It really does not matter. I will get some Reap on middle. I think that's pretty cool. 
I will sap upstairs to nothing. Fine. I'm going to go ahead and apply some reap on middle. I think this is a great example of a case where it provides a lot of value. Work upstairs. Yeah, we hit this man for a good 250. I'm good with that. And we should. He comes back upstairs. I think he might die on this turn, right? Yeah, I think he's very likely to pass away after a turn this strong. So we get more consumes, we fracture him, we frozen lance him, and I shoot him. Yeah, he's taking 2,000 damage from Reap. He's gone. Goodbye, patient. All right, excellent. We get the pre-relentless. I get something here? I'll take blank pages. Sure, I've got plenty of space for garbage. Why not? That seems fun. And, yeah, we should be very strong here, I think, right? Able to easily neuter the divinity, and then waves are just going to be the only question, which shouldn't be that big of a deal either. Huh. I, hmm, this is a cool turn. You know why it's a cool turn? I preserve the siren. I play out everything here. Everything else. We blow up bottom floor. And we freeze our whole set of units here. And then we go... Chief. Siren. Siren. And we get everything played out here. And we get to hold on to a gifts here. And we get everything played out because of the Hell's Banners, right? That was the whole reason we did this. Behold, Tethys. Good luck. Oh no, she died. Now, I did waste the Echo Seedling by doing that, but it killed a wave, so I'm not really mad about it, actually. Right? It's fine. I'll go ahead and hit the Guardian's Amulet here, which lets me just send it, right? This is all fine. The one thing we'll have to watch out for here is it's easy to go a little too hard, I think. I could very easily burn all of my cards and simply not have tools anymore. Penumbra! Why are you here, bud? There you go, champ. He kills a man. All right, sure. I'm fine with that. We're going to shoot the one thing that could potentially threaten me here is good. I'm going to hit him with that Ancient Resonance action. Reap a bit. I go for the Return Soul. You could go real hard is the thing. The question really is just how hard do you actually need to go here? And the answer is actually not very. We don't need to go that hard. Windleton with Quick is kind of a wild swing crazy top floor we i think we should respect here this is a good turn to go a little bit hard so i think this is a is this a good turn to go hard yeah i can just send this next guy so four it's good we load it up kill one guy it's fine we send it on the next because we can't kill the boss with Reap here, right? It's easy to be like, haha, we got it, but we don't, we're not going to. And now I'm going to hit the shelter. And I'm going to save the Titan's Gratitude. We're clearing this floor, so we chill. We could potentially go much harder. I'd like to go harder on a floor that has the mini boss on it, though. I think we chill. Yeah, we're fine with this. Bottom floor does something, at least. It hits some enemies, so I'm okay with that. Spikes fade. Incredible work. Now we want to go a little bit harder, yeah? Yeah, now we want to go a little bit harder. I have seven cards in hand. Let's draw three more. Cool. We hit some stuff. Great work. We sap this to, the, to oblivion. We will reap very hard here. 100%. Send it on some of these things. 170. I can almost kill this guy straight up. I'm going to shoot the boss with this one, though. And then I think we'll just kind of hit a little harder. We do a 1,000 damage here. That's a pretty solid floor, if I'm being honest with you. 
a very strong turn. Soul Guard, incredible work, champ. Top floor, I think we continue to just send it, right? We're at a point where I think we're going to get it. We did get Slate, for the record. We did get Slate. So I should respect to the best of my ability, I think. Yeah, we should, I think, respect a little bit here. I think I'm willing to burn another Frozen Lance on this one. We clear this whole floor pretty comfortably. I want to do my next big turn when Slate is up here. And I think we're going to chill on that. Okay. Cleansing Water doing some ridiculous work, as always. Horn, Breaker, Prince. Look at him. He's trying. He, he tried. Okay, let's hit these guys down, I think. All right, we're doing some good damage here. I'm going to shoot the boss with all of these Power of Knowledges because they're strong plays. I could Permafrost the Deadweight here, but I want to save the Permafrost for a future turn. That's good, I think. All right, another Prince. There he is, Prince Chills. Now this is a turn I want to send it on, right? Let's go ahead and Gifts here. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and Preserve first. I do this because I want to make sure I have space in my hand for everything. Now we're gonna send it. Our goal now is to basically do maximum damage to the boss, pretty much. Cool. This all seems good to me. We're going to send it on the other gifts here. An outrageous high roll with this consumed knowledge. We're just going to blow up. I think it is better to just hit the boss with these for now, for sure. I'm going to go ahead and return soul back a Brakshire and send it. And we get the, we kill the boss on this turn. Good job. For 1,440, good. I'm just, I probably could have gone a little faster there, but I wanted to save those big turns for when I was actually threatened by tall enemies. And I think that was a good way of doing it. It's a very secure way to play that run. I think we could have gone much faster and just full sent it, maybe killed him a couple turns earlier, but I'm not playing here for score. I'm playing here to win guaranteed. I also do like the way that I played out turn one there. I think it worked out in my favor. I think it certainly could have gone the other direction. We probably could have sapped him to zero anyway if I just unloaded everything and the Echo Seedling plays up there. But I was a little bit less inclined to do so because it meant my turn two was much stronger. So I don't know. It's fine. We'll go to run summary. I don't think there's really... You could maybe argue your way around that one either way. And I think it's fine. I think regardless, the way we did it with the Hell's Banners was a good play. So, but really, this is a strong run, right? I mean, Decayers clearing floors and actually pre-relentlessing bosses. The Sirens will win Relentless no matter what with the Sap support, which is great. And the rest of this is just entirely gifts for a guard going nuts. One of the few runs where I'm fully fine just sending all of my cards it's cool also because it means that I don't mind having a big deck because I'm able to play out a ridiculous number of cards in a turn and still burn my deck to essentially nothing. The interaction with the Notice Stone was very noticeable and nice. Decay Decoy huge here as expected. Split Anvil doing a lot of work. Don't knock my Cleansing Water or Sigiled Seaweed, which were completely melting Divinity Waves and everything else, frankly. Just a really solid set of relics. Big shout out also to Icicle Fracture, being able to abuse this to store cards for later turns. Pretty cool. It fully enabled that interesting turn one play on Divinity, for instance, because I preserved one and then Icicle Fractured the other. So it's pretty cool. And also Power of Knowledge, really strong here. It doesn't get the full credit because I think, you know, Gifts for Regards doing a majority of the work to enable it. But still pretty good. Happy to have had it. Happy to have duped it. So pretty good there. Yeah, honestly, awesome. Good stuff, all things considered. Very strong Decay or Chief run and a very cool run altogether anyway. Just fun. It's good to have gifts for a guard. I love I love this card when it when it makes sense. 
And it doesn't always make sense, right? Because you might have a holdover or something. You cannot afford to burn it. But a combination of the permafrost plus the fact that all of my spells were expendable made this really effective. So awesome. I really don't have much else to add. That's a really cool run. Glad we've played it. So hopefully you enjoyed. And yeah, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.